she gets it's raped, kind of... but handled responsibly. No, yeah. No nudity in that scene. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, you like we've talked about in the past. I mean, you don't need a whole movie to to, to show it. But like I said, like Matt said, it's handled very well. That we see it get dragged away, see clothes ripped, you hear a scream, cuts away. He finds her, and I guess the impact you want where he's pissed. I'm gonna get those assholes, and gets them, and fucks them up, you know, with the truck. I mean, okay, the film, has problems, so. the film works in the fact that you know Don Michael Paul does a good job acting. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit more emotion with his character, like you, you understand. Because his mom, his brother, sister's killed, then his father is put in the hospital, and then ultimately he dies. Yeah. His girlfriend is raped. Pretty much all that needed to happen was his dog gets killed and his foot got ran over. Like <laughs> Everything yeah. bad that happened to this guy. It, so, it, becomes a, it becomes a thing. Of, it, it becomes an actual country music song, man. It's just everything that can happen happens. Uh, eight, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's almost like that, but it's one of those movies... There's, there's few vigilante films that do that. I mean, of course, I mean, our favorite is Death Wish 3. Yeah. Uh, we split on Savage Street. Matt doesn't hate Savage Street. No, I don't I got, hate it. You don't hate it. It's just it's not number one. You know, there's Class of 1984. There's Hell High, but I don't know if that's really vigilante. Right. Or vigilante, Robert Forster, you know, Fred Williamson, you know, Young Warriors. Good idea, badly executed. Okay. I think the brave one sucks. The brave one. Okay. Death sentence, good. Kevin Bacon deserves something for that performance. My, my only gripe with the film is the last scene. That's it. You get the bad guy there. You're bleeding. He's bleeding. He says something. Pulls out the magnum. Pulls back the hammer on his lap. He goes, are you ready? Pans out. Cuts away. We don't see. You don't hear no. No. Like, you know, I want to see the demise of my villain, you know? <laughs> but the movie's good, though. It's watchable. But the point we're, we're making is a good vigilante film or wrench flick is the ones that draw you in. Yeah. That doesn't have their popular fist in your face message or whatever, you know? Not trying to have his cake and eat it too and everything like that. This is a movie I think anybody who loves the vigilante film should give it a watch. But, I mean, for me, I mean, do I love the film to death? Um, I can't, and the fact that I like the film, do I have problems? Mm-hmm. Um, number one, it needed practical effects. Yeah. Because if when people get run over, they kind of disappear. They go ah, and then you don't really it's see anything. So <laughs> see, if you took like maximum overdrive when trucks hit someone, it'll splat. Yeah. You know, with the ACDC. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, but yeah. like. If you don't do a monster truck, uh, even Monster Man, which uh, I know F three lights, I it's a good idea, but I don't think it was, I thought it could have executed better. Although mm. the guy, uh, the guy did better with Shoot 'Em Up, the director. Yeah, director the, the, uh, Shoot 'Em Up is his finest hour. I agree with that. But I mean, that had some good practical effects in there too. Yeah, but this film needed those practical effects, and it, it needed. Um, it almost seemed like a, a tame movie. Yeah. I think you you were saying one time, uh, you saw it when you were a kid. It was seemed intense, but you saw it as though it was kind of tame. Yeah, that's true. And I saw it as a kid. I was like, wow, this is too much. And now I look at it now, I'm like, well, wow, it's not that bad, really. <laughs> that's what Mike was telling when we, when we were watching the movie together. After we were talking about it, and Mike was saying. Because there's some titties in there, because, of course, Ned Beatty's character has the strip club this. He sees some breasts. But he right? was, yeah, he was saying without that, the strip club. It'll be a PG-13, pretty much. And I can see yeah, I can see why. And I think for a solid vigilante film, it kind of needs to have an R feeling to it. Yeah. But only that, and I think it needs a little bit more action at the end. The... Because he doesn't, he, it's pretty much, he takes the monster truck out three times yeah well he has, the, he has the drill that he retracts out that comes out of the bumper which is cool effect good idea but, but he doesn't use it yeah. yeah he just takes it he drills it in the van of one, one of the assholes who's driving away in, in fear and then the door gets stuck there that's about it and it's used as sort of a 
I don't know what you call it, kind of like a suspense device. Because you get to the final act of the film, I don't know, should we blow it out of the water? Or... Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the film, uh, the guy runs over the bar that Ned Beatty's at. It's only him, Ned Beatty, and his son left. They have this, I thought it was stupid, the cop shows up in the middle of nowhere, has a draw with Ned Beatty, your main villain, and gets shot by the cop, and I'm like, your main villain just died just from a little cop? What? Yeah, basically, it's one of those simultaneous exchange bullshit. He shoots him between the eyes, Ned Beatty's eyes, and then Ned Beatty fires and takes out the cop's sh- uh, shoulder and stuff. So it's you don't you know you look at it, you call it bullshit. I, I I can't defend that, you know. And basically, the the lead guy gets out for some reason off his monster truck, and the son steals it, goes over, tries to ram the drill through this little pipe that Lee's girlfriend, Don Michael Paul's girlfriend's in. Yeah. And basically, Don Michael Paul's able to get the, the bad guy out. Bad guy just crushed. A fist fight, a struggle there. And uh, he basically pushes the, the guy on the floor and half his face gets run over. But once again, it's... You don't see anything. No, we don't see anything. We just see, ah! And that's it. It's, like about, it's about to run over him and then it cuts away. Yeah, and this movie, believe it or not, I mean, we've looked in trivia, unless someone knows something we don't know, is not, it hasn't been, I don't know if it's been fucked with for the MPAA or nothing, I mean, I know the director, Stephen Stern, he's a, his movie is actually filmed in Canada, it's a Canadian production, so it's a movie that's set in Canada with rednecks, so I didn't think they had those in Canada, really? <laughs> um... Huh? <laughs> Maybe I, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do no. <laughs> Um, there's rednecks in Iowa, and that's close okay. to Canada. Oh, there you go. So they cross the border. <laughs> they cross the border, the border, the border. They cross the border. <laughs> they, the need, they, need a, they need the wall between Canada and uh, Minnesota now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, okay. For me, the film, it's a good idea. Don Michael Paul is solid, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Ned Beatty, even though he had a weird haircut and Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> jacket. <laughs> I think the idea is he's supposed to be like an ex-greaser, like, you know, like a 50s thug or something that doesn't let go of the look. I mean, the character is interesting for a villain. I mean, he's a slimy guy, pretty much. Like, he has a wise-ass mouth on him. Where the sheriff questions him after his cars have been smashed up in the beginning of the film. And he goes, how you broke your, how you hurt your arm? He sees his arm in a sling. That's from the bar brawl he got into with the lead guy's father and stuff. He goes, what happened? You slipped and fell? Yeah, I slipped on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ned Beatty has another moment there where some of his sons, before some of them start getting taken out. And they're at the bar and they bring No, he, to- no he goes like... Um... We do a trip in the shower, and just I like the way Ned Beatty goes like, "No, I tripped on my dick." Like just the throwaway line, and I know that that did crap me up. But like, <laughs> no, I tripped on my dick. It was like a throwaway. It wasn't like the camera wasn't even on his face. Yeah. <laughs> but he is full on lower. But it was a pretty yeah. good line. Yeah. But good. Ned Beatty's good. Don Michael Paul's good. The idea I like. Yeah. Um, you really hate the villains. Mm-hmm. And uh, when the monster truck is in action, that's good. Yeah. Um, but I would like practical effects and maybe a little bit more uh, action. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe in the first half, or I don't know if in the ending. Yeah. I think I think it's due for a remake. I know people are like, well, Matt, you always bitch about remakes. This I think you can do. I think you can get some. I think the right people to do it. Like, okay. James Wynn from Death Sentence, to see like the man has the right idea how to do a revenge film, just show a salad come up into your villain, then we then we're on the right page. You know, that's yay for me. Or nay will be don't give this shit to Samuel fucking asshole bear. Don't give it to him. Don't give it to Nimrod. Rob, and Rod. in general, don't give it to 20th century fuckface. What was that, Matt? How about Robbie Rod? <laughs> 
Don't give it to Robbie Ryan, especially. <laughs> That's it. But Matt came up with a good suggestion yesterday. It is actually a good idea. Who 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 would you like to see uh, take on this, Matt? Who would I like to say? I yeah, mentioned it yesterday. You remember? Yeah. Can I, I can I remember? Uh... Well, it's from from your movie. Oh, I mentioned the uh, Owls Under Aja. Yeah. Because the uh, the Hills of Eyes remake, the last half hour is basically a yeah. vigilante film. Yeah, when well, Matt's kicking mutant ass. So and. You definitely, the guy definitely does uh, practical effects, and um, I think you could probably handle action. That'd be a little bit different, but um, I think you could get the certain look of an Aja film and yeah. certain the effects, practical effects, like an Aja. He could even get the same people who did the score for Hills Have Eyes. You know, get, yeah. that, get those guys involved. You know, whoever it was that did the score Come for Hills Have What happened? Tom and Dandy, that's the guys who did guy. Tom and Dandy. T O M A N D A N D Y. Mr. Dandy, okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah, Tom and Dandy. Tom and Dandy, yes. But uh, yeah, he did a great score. I love the Hills of Eyes remake. I like the score to that. But I yeah. think it should be do for. <laughs> yeah. Just a straightforward, you know. I want to see a monster truck on a movie again. Yeah, I mean it's a good idea. I mean. I feel like, I don't know, some of these revenge films or these so-called vigilante films. Now, granted, we have not seen Hobo with a shotgun yet, but I'll keep my expectations very low for that one, thanks to what Robbie Rad did to me this past year with that fucking movie, which I know you probably put a picture of it there. I'm not going to mention it, you know. But, you know, uh, so I'm playing a downplay for Hobo with a shotgun, so hopefully maybe it have an opposite effect. And stuff, but I feel like all these vigilante films now. Even I heard horrible things about Faster, the Rocks film or whatever. That is trying to always throw a big message in there. Like we can't have just a, a revenge vigilante film. It wouldn't work. We gotta try to put something in there. Why? You know? Do you not have faith in your actors or your writers or your director? You gotta put something with the fist in your face. Yeah, it'd be like the first Death Wish. Yeah, it's got to be like, like they're trying to go for the first Death Wish movie. That's Which? Probably. I'm not a fan of, I admit it. Uh, I don't know. I understand, I understand I, as somewhat it's, it's there, because if, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have Death Wish 3. Uh, everybody's or... like, what? You don't like the first Death Wish? Fuck you. <laughs> just, but... well, first off, it's a slow-paced film. I mean, Charles Bronson's performance is very good in it, I will say that. It's just very slow-paced, and plus... He really doesn't get his hands on the people that kill his daughter. I mean, that, that rape his daughter. And he kill his he wife. doesn't kill Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he doesn't kill Jeff Goldblum or the bald headed motherfucker or whatever. But I, I respect Death Wish. I respect it because if it wasn't for it, we wouldn't have the franchise, you know. But, but I, I, I don't like it. I, I, I don't like it either, yeah. I like two, it. Two, I don't mind it, but I wouldn't buy it. That's just me. I mean, I it's there. I, I do like part two, but part three is my favorite. Part three, I love. Yeah, I like I part four. Part, see, part four. Got the grenade launcher at the end. You got the grenade launcher. You got the him putting the mob against each other. Okay. And part five. five and I'm alone in part five. With, I, with passion. I know Matt hates it with I, passion. I'm alone in that. You know, I don't mind five. Cause I like Michael Parks. You know, it's a slow paced film, but at least he gets his men. You know, I like the remote control soccer ball with the detonator in it. He fucks up uh, Matt's friend, Robert Joy, from Hills Have Eyes remake. And Freddy, he's something for a dangerous problem and blows up the soccer ball. Okay. I'm the only one that liked it. That's understandable. <laughs> you know, he throws, uh, he pushes Michael Parks into the thing of acid. Ah! Right before he does that, he goes, you need a bash. He throws him in there. Okay. You know, but that's just me. I understand. I mean, Death Wish 3 is the better film. I will agree on that. But the revenge film today is all they want to put a message in there or they're trying to be like Death Wish. Death Sentence, I bitch about the last part, but up until that, it's a solid fucking movie. The camera work, the acting, 